Jay Kinerny, we all think of you as a pair. Do you right. think of yourselves like that? Can you see a Morgan well, without see a ourselves wife? as an apple. As an apple, actually. <laughs> <laughs> as a pair. Yes, we That's always feel uh, that we're together, don't we? Yes, we do, yes. yes. Now, artists usually find that there's quite an argument about whose name comes top of the bill. Yes. Was it always Morecambe and Wise, or did you have great decisions about whether it should be Wise and Morecambe? No, the reason for that is that uh, the, it depends how the name runs, you see. If it had run better as Wise and Morecambe, it would have been that way around. Well, Morecambe and Morecambe and Wise, I probably... <laughs> Morecambe and Wise, it flows off the tongue, you see. Yes, Abbott and I Costello. Do. Flanagan and Allen. Flanagan and Allen, Flanagan and Allen. yes. It, yeah. It's a... It's a, a, a Wise and Morecambe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to talk to you a bit more in a moment, but first of all, we'd like to take a look back to mm. the days when Morecambe and Wise were hardly heard of. They had their first break when they were given a television series. But their jokes didn't seem to catch on, and so it was back to the boards doing more variety work. Until their second chance to perform on television in 1961. An actor strike in the second programme left them without a supporting cast and might have proved disastrous. But instead, they discovered a talent for ad-libbing which has proved the key to their success. They are able to improvise and improve on their basic script. Occasionally, out of necessity, if Eric's comment on learning lines is anything to go by, he says, anything over four lines and I go white. It doesn't just all happen on the night, though. And every day, for nearly three weeks before each programme, Eric and Ernie drive to a boys' club near the television studios for rehearsals with the producer and his team. They work from ten until four and don't even stop for lunch. Bring me laughter. You get Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. From the very first rehearsal, Eric and Ernie have a script to work from. And the man who has one of the hardest jobs, the scriptwriter, is behind the scenes hammering a typewriter. Eddie Braben, Eric and Ernie have been working together since 1968. Eddie started writing as a boy. And I can honestly say I used to write about 3,000 jokes a week. And they were the 3,000 of the worst jokes you've ever read in your life. I think in the first year, the very first joke I sold, I sold it to Charlie Chester. And the joke was, hop along Cassidy's mother when he was a little baby, Hopalong Cassidy's mother knew he was going to be a cowboy because he always wore a tan gallon nappy. That was the first joke I ever saw, and I got half a crown for that. Eric and Ernie have always included singing and dancing in their act. The child star, Shirley Temple, had such an influence on Eric that he learnt to tap dance when he first started performing. And Ernie, in his early days, used to do clog dancing. Did yeah. you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. What is the same for us now? Uh, no, uh, would you I'm go and get changed for your next number? Before you sing. Would you go and get changed for your next number? And what are you going to sing for us before you get changed to sing for your next number? What are you going to sing for us? You and I. Yes. Well, do you mind singing along because he's going to be bloody awful. Ah, ah, ah. Can't you use it? Mr. Chips. Goodbye, Mr. Chips. It's been a great, great, great pleasure working with you. Mind what you're doing on the way home. And don't forget your promise. Goodbye. Nice fella. It's lovely. <laughs> but will you tell me something? Yes. Why is it that you can never get anybody's name right? I don't know. Um, it's a gift. Eric and Ernie, even there, after several days of rehearsal, when everybody there knew the script, you were still making them laugh. Did you make people laugh when you were at school, all your school friends? I don't remember. That's no, I don't really. I don't yeah. think I did, no. Yeah. I never used to. I used to do, oh. I found myself quite a normal boy. Yeah. I used to do the Christmas uh, pantomime and things. I was put in charge of that, and, uh, but I don't think the other kids found me very funny. Well, I think Karen, sitting right in the middle in the front row, has got a question to ask you about That's when you were at school. Karen. Did you have a favourite teacher at school and what influence did they have over you? Uh, favourite teacher at school? No. I'm afraid I didn't have a favourite teacher at school. No, I, uh, I don't really have happy memories at school. I never liked it. Did you have, I mean, Eric, did oh, you, you were have... close. You were close <laughs> the first time. Eh? Very close, huh? Yes, I did. I had a man called Mr. Burgoyne. Unfortunately, he died. Mm. But he always used to keep me in purposely after school to go for sweets for him to the sweet shop, and he always used to let me have one. And I liked him for that. Um, at school, what were your favourite lessons? Football was mine. Uh, it was a lesson. It was three quarters of an hour lesson. We used to have football yeah. games. It was called. Eric, out yeah. of all the decent football teams in the country, why don't you support a good team like Arsenal instead of Luton Town? I would say that's fighting talk, wouldn't you, Eric? <laughs> yes. I think there's going to be a punch. I think that... What was his name again? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm going to meet him on the way yeah, out. Yes, I'll put that in the and, book. Uh, 
You see that lovely skin he's got there? <laughs> it's going to be blue when he leaves. <laughs> Just there. He's got a big black eye. Yeah. I support Luton Town because I like Luton Town. The third row, a little girl with the lovely yellow top. What's your yeah. name? Carolyn. 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 Did you do a lot of homework? No, I didn't do homework either. No, I didn't learn anything at school. <laughs> <laughs> it was just beginning to show. <laughs> so, so Went to school stupid and came away well, the same, same way. way yes. Something intrigues me. When you got together, how did you manage to perform, rehearse, perform, and still do your schoolwork? Well, in those days, when I when uh, I first joined Ernie, uh, Ernie and I first met, um, it was in this Discovery show, and Ernie had, is six months old, older than me, and he just left school. And when I joined, I still had to go like to, in Sheffield I went to school, mm -hmm. in Swansea I went to school, Middlesbrough, all those places I used to go to school. And what they did in those days was, because you had to go to school, obviously, and what they did, they used to give me a book and sit me at the back of the class. That's what used to happen. And the same thing happened to me when I was didn't on... didn't learn anything. Yeah. I was on tour with Jack Hilton's band, which was before I met Eric, in 1939. I'd be about uh, 12, 12 and a half, and I used to go to a different school every week, and uh, sit at the back of the class with a book. Yeah. So did you leave school when you were quite young? Uh, Thirteen and a half because yeah. of the war. Oh, we both yeah. read the same book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> did they ever find that the work was hard? Oh, yes. Which work do you mean? School work. Schoolwork? Oh, Schoolwork? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, he did, in particular. I've, I've never been a great learner. I find it very hard to learn. Uh, even the dialogue of the shows, I have to really pound it in. Some people are marvellous, they can do it. I can't. I have to work hard at learning anything, I'm afraid. I wish I would write it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. But, um, during your cra training as a comedian, has it ever been necessary for you to have dancing lessons or piano lessons? Or any yes. Um, I learnt to play the piano, but I can't play the piano because I, I wasn't that good. Um, I learnt dancing. I was a pretty good dancer when I was a young man, last week. <laughs> and uh, a clarinet I learned to play a clarinet, which I still can't play. But I found on the trombone, which I found them all very useful in the sketches that we now do on TV. I don't know whether you saw a programme we did a Christmas show, but a couple of la last Christmas bit one with Andre Previn, where I play the piano. Well, that was through being able to know a little bit about music that I could do that kind of thing. Did you feel then when the war came along and it interrupted your performing together that that was the end, it was just the end of a nice few years together? But it didn't interrupt, you see, because we weren't old enough to go in the forces and we went into strike a new note at the... Uh, we were old. Actually, we were probably picking up work that the older fellows that had been called up, uh, we were taking their work. But eventually you did go into war. Ah, yes, we were, were 18, you see. Yeah. Who, who wants to ask a question about... I think somebody wanted to ask how Ernie got on at sea. Who wanted to ask that question? Yeah. When you was in the Navy, were there any casualties in a result of your cooking? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in the Merchant Navy. Well. The only time a captain's jumped overboard. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the Merchant Navy and, and uh, I mean, I couldn't cook, couldn't cook anyway, so... Uh, and I was on a, a coal. Uh, we used to deliver coal from Newcastle down to uh, London, up uh, the river. Said. <laughs> <laughs> so everything was covered in coal dust. No, everything uh, was black pudding. <laughs> it was. Uh, I wasn't. He wasn't a very good cook. I can promise you that. I was seasick for two years. Two years he was seasick. Mm. Eric. Yeah. Um, did I you ever have an ambition to become something like a fighter pilot during the war? Uh, yes. I, well, I'd love to have been a fighter pilot. Yes. Because mm. I could have shot down my own plane. <laughs> but the um, the ambitions that I had as a child. Uh, was not necessarily con concerned with, sh with show business. I would like to have been a policeman or um, a fighter pilot, yes. But you've got to be clever to be those things, and I wasn't that clever. You need education, you see. So I remember that. <laughs> um, would you have chosen any other job if you hadn't been comedians or if you hadn't met up again? Which jobs would you have chosen? I never knew, I never knew anything else. Uh, show business has been my whole life. When I was six years of age, my father took me around the clubs and I performed in the working men's clubs and from then on graduated. I've never known anything else. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think no, that's my are. life. Mm. I think it's my... I couldn't... There isn't anything else I would like to do. It's the only thing we know anything about, really, isn't it? Yes, yes. I don't think we would have succeeded in any other line. I think that's it. Front row. Nice motor. shirt. Andrew Green. Andrew. I know that your first television series wasn't a success. <laughs> Who, told Who told you? Who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> it must have been your father. Blabbermouth. Uh, at that time, did you consider having a different job? 
No, 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 no. We're still kept at it. It's uh, you know just because you got a few knocks, it doesn't really. Uh... If you're dedicated to show business, you don't give up. You still it's not keep all easy. On. You got you have this overriding sort of uh, ego, I suppose, that uh, they all made a mistake. We were right. We were right. We were, right. <laughs> <laughs> we were too early for them, or they weren't prepared for us, and we still thought the shows were okay, really.